My favorite color is not my favorite color, but it was certainly my lucky color. All right. <laughs> you guys were there for the Rougeau's Bulldogs uh, heat that they had. What was your take on that whole situation between the two teams? <clears throat> um, well, every dog has his day. I think uh, I got a really good take on it. Uh, I said it both parties pretty well. Me and Jim were working on the Rougeau's at the time. And the Bulldogs were like our best buddies down there. But Dynamite was, um, you know, I had suffered you know, measurably from a small man complex and really had a chip chip on his shoulder that way. And it always, um, it was like a little pit bull that had gotten to a lot of scraps. And that old saying, what every dog has his day is a true saying. And, uh, what happened was um, Kurt Henning had been ribbed the Ruchos. And um, Ruchos didn't know who it was. They assumed it was Kurt, but Kurt was so clear, clever and how he, how he hid it from the Ruchos that uh, they didn't know who it was. And so Jock uh, ratted out uh, dynamite to the to the uh, head off or to the Vince or whatever, or said he did. I don't know if he did. But he complained that uh, that uh, dynamite had screwed with his stuff. Right. And I think Kurt was uh, left, kept ribbing him, and um, so <clears throat> Kurt. I don't think he meant. To, I don't think anyone had any real. No one ever saw that it was going to get into this big of a deal. But Kurt came in and said. He's in there saying, the Rougeos are saying it was you. The dynamite told Dynamite this. And so Dynamite goes, gets all. He was like, I think, looking for a reason to finally have a chance to snatch Jock, who was, had a lot of friction sometimes with guys like Dynamite and stuff. He was a little too much of, uh, I don't even know what it was how to say, but Jock sometimes wore out guys like Dynamite. It was the clash of personalities. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so Dynamite walked in on Jock and, uh, Slapped him with an open hand slap while he was playing cards. He just slapped him and knocked him off his chair. Uh, basically, he almost knocked him out cold. But then an open hand slap from behind is pretty, pretty stiff. And Jock, well, I don't think he ever thought of himself as a real tough guy. He got up and said, well, What's your problem? And he kind of got words. Right. Dynamite, uh, I think Jock threw a couple punches at Dynamite. Dynamite took him down and choked him out in the dressing room. Embarrassed him a couple of times. And the last time he front face locked him and took him down. While he was choking him out, he, um, he taunted Ray and said, Come on, Ray, you know, whatever you want, join in. He can come in, join in anytime you want. And Ray had just injured his knee two or three nights before. He actually had the ice bag on his knee, so he wasn't faking nothing. And he, he, could, he was still working with me and Jim every night. But Ray, who was a pretty tough guy, he was a Golden Belt boxing champion in Montreal and stuff, was. Look, easy to underestimate because Jock, Jock was uh, easy going, but Ray was actually pretty salty, pretty tough, and uh, might have given Dynamite a pretty good run for his money. And Dynamite kept taunting him that night, <clears throat> and um, what happened after that was that uh, every night, Dynamite, Raymond Ray standing over Dynamite, who had Jock in a front face lock, and uh, Ray said, just let him up. Ray was really good about it, like, really calm. And, yeah, you proved your point, you let him up. And Dynamite was pretty cocky and said, kept saying stuff like, you know, ready for, you know, if you want a piece to. The thing was that every, every night after that, for the next week, um, Dynamite kept walking in the dressing room. And kind of, most people forget those kind of, those things happen in wrestling, you know, right. little problems. And, but Dynamite come in and set his bag down and go, hey, Ray, how's your knee? Whatever you want. And, all that. and he kept provoking it. Sticking it, sticking it in Ray's eye, and I could tell. And Jim will probably remember. That every night we worked with the Rushos, they were getting more tense. That there was that relaxed working atmosphere between them. They were getting more, and it wasn't us. It was the Bulldogs were just really starting. To, they were just thinking. About we didn't them. realize that they were down in the other locker room. And so it just got so tense. I remember down when Dynamite I said, "You better watch your back. These guys are pissed off, and they're really, you know, never Dynamite." Going. You know, let him try. Let him try. He wished he was willing it, provoking it every time he saw them. <clears throat> when the actual fight happened, uh, Dynamite was, uh, me and Jim were in, uh, we, we weren't at the TV tapings that day, which is a odd thing. Where they flew us to uh, somewhere out to California and worked with the Bolsheviks in a uh, uh, dark spot show or whatever. Right. Uh, but uh, the Rougeau's uh, jock uh, just 
decide that Raymond, I think Raymond uh, getting Jock, building him up and saying he could do it. And uh, Dynamite was coming around the corner at the Timmy's in uh, Toledo. And uh, Jock just sucker punched him when he came around the corner and just knocked all his teeth out. Just gave one shot overhand, right punch as hard as he could, just drilled him in the face, knocked all his teeth out. And Dynamite never went down. Just stood there with his hands on his knees, bent over. And the two Ruchos ran out and got there, grabbed all their stuff, jumped in their car and drove off. <clears throat> and then I think the thing that I think that kind of killed the heart or killed the spirit of Dynamite was that uh, after the show they didn't see the Ruchos. And uh, they had to go on a tour of Europe. There was a friend, tour of France. The Ruchos of Morocco and a bunch of guys went over to France and then they got into all kinds of trouble over there, drunk and crazy with police, a lot of problems on the trip. And uh, as a matter of fact, Morocco got fired and then right. came back. But uh, there was a, a lot of it was built around, because the Bulldogs were really popular with everybody. Everybody loved the Bulldogs. And they were like two bad pit bulls. There. Well, not even two, one bad pit bull. But everybody had a lot of respect for him. Mm -hmm. And I think when you see a tough guy like Don, like, yeah, that happened to him, there's a certain the heartbreak that goes with it. A lot of guys felt that with him. And uh, Jock was never a tough guy, he never pretended to be. But he, um, <clears throat> what happened, I think, when they came back, I'm not making a long story of it, is that um, Vince had Dynamite's SummerSlam check, they had the, the upcoming Survivor Series check, plus possibly maybe even a WrestleMania check. I can't remember if it took that long to get it in those days. But he had all his royalty checks. He had Dynamite had about a hundred thousand dollars or so that Vince was holding. Just in that, case. That was coming. That was due him. And when Dynamite came back from France, uh, Vince said, "You gotta shake hands and forget the whole thing." And uh, Dynamite was like, the, the, everyone was waiting for Dynamite to, you know, to fix the Rougeos kind of thing. And uh, I'm sure the Rougeos figured that too. But I don't think Ray was afraid of very much. Right. And um, Vince basically put it to Dynamite, you either shake hands and, uh, and uh, or you don't get paid. Mm -hmm. And so Dynamite shook hands with uh, Jacques Rougeau in a hotel room in San Francisco. And uh, I think it broke his spirit. He shook hands and did everything the way he thought he should do at the time and do this for his family. Cause it was, and he got the money and he went home and he became a bitter alcoholic that just, uh, just went downhill from there. I just ate him up just as time went on. Just ate him up. And the old saying of what every dog has his days. <laughs> that was his day. What are your guys' uh, memories of your first title uh, 